All right. We are going to look at our reading response journal, and we are turning to the page visualizing. Mine is white. I'm assuming yours is blue. Yeah. It looks like this. Yeah. It has a camera. Now, why do you suppose visualizing is important with the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe? Why is it important for you to listen to the words, to listen to the descriptive, and visualize what C.S. Lewis is writing about? Cool. There's not many pictures. Well, there's not many pictures. That is very true. What about the story, though? What about the setting? We've already talked about setting. That requires us to really visualize what C.S. Lewis is saying. Tyson. Uh, Narnia, Phantom Menace, and Narnia. Yeah. Narnia Why? What is, what's the big deal with Narnia? It's, it's where most of the story takes place. And is it, is it a real, is it a world that we're accustomed to or used no. to? No. It's a different world. So therefore, we have to really use our imaginations to visualize it. Who can tell me one thing about Narnia that we already know for sure? What about Narnia is a description of Narnia that is, we already know. Christian. And it's always snowy, um, snowy and snowy. Snowy. We don't have Christmas. Yeah, always winter and never Christmas. That's such a bummer. So we know that it's always snow. So then how can we visualize that? Is it green with butterflies floating around? Sadly, no. So what do we, if we looked outside and we were at Narnia, what would we see? Grant. No. Snow. Snow. Lots and lots of snow. So then the color outside would be green. No. What color would we see predominantly? Ella. White. So we're visualizing the trees. They may be green if they are a, uh, a pine tree, they might be green, but what else are we going to see on the trees? Gabe? Um, white. white. Maybe glistening with, with uh, some icicles. So we have to visualize a winter wonderland. So then we visualize Mr. Tumnus, who is a character that we have been introduced to. How has he been described? What is something about him that you have visualized in your mind? Because we're not looking at the descript of Mr. Tumnus. Who can tell me what Mr. Tumnus looks like just by visualizing the descriptions that C.S. Lewis has given us? Helen. Yeah. Yes, very good. Who remembers what he is called? What kind of creature is he? Do we have these, these things running around? No. Madison? Be interesting. And Emma? A fawn. A fawn. Now, a fawn, is a fawn a real creature? No. No, it is make-believe. So that means we really have to visualize because it's not a real creature. Now, we got introduced to another character. If you turn on, well, no, let's not, because I want you to visualize. We are introduced to the who, the villain, arch nemesis of the story. Grayson, the white witch. The white witch. Dun, dun, dun. So is she described as very beautiful and colorful and just a lovely, lovely person? No, no. How is she described? How do you visualize? The white witch. I hold up a white sheet of paper. Why? Jonathan. Yeah. Really, really, really white. What else about her do you remember that uh, C.S. Lewis used as a descriptive of the white witch? How else do you visualize the white witch? Owen. 
Where, where was the red? Yeah, her lips were bright red. So if you look at Sam's shirt and the white sheet of paper, quite a contrast. Oh. Or Luke's sh shirt. If you held up a white sheet of paper, Luke, against your red shirt, again, a really, really huge contrast. What do I mean by contrast? What does a contrast mean? I'm saying that word, but I really should make sure you know what I mean. Ella. Yes. Opposites. A contrast is the difference between the white white and the deep red. So visualizing is a very important aspect of any reading, any literature, especially in Narnia, because we're talking about different creatures, different worlds. So it's really important for all of you to visualize things while we're reading. Now, C.S. Lewis gives us some wonderful descriptives. Pay attention to them. Visualize. While we're reading, take the time to think. How does that look? I mean, there are a few pictures, but not many. Like on page 32, we've got a pic picture of the queen, not looking very pleasant. But however, there's no color, so we cannot vision, we can't see the contrast between the white white and the bright red of her lips. But we can visualize it in our mind. So, it says on our page of visual, visualizing, good readers use details from the story to create a picture in their minds. Does that mean you have a camera in your mind and you take pictures? No, but that is what you kind of need to do, especially when we are reading about something very different than what we're used to. How to visualize, create a movie in your mind to picture the characters, setting, and events in the story. Use the five senses to imagine what you, what you, what are your five senses? Name one, Winchine. Hearing. Hearing. Name another, James. Smell. Smell. Tessa. Taste. What did you say? Taste. Taste. Cold. See. See. What's another, what's the last one? We have four, Jeremiah. Touch. Touch, very good. We can visualize with our five senses. So what I want you to do is to get out your sheet of paper, write down, you can just write Narnia to just make it shorter, which is on your top or your cover, the Chronicles of Narnia, and the date is April 20th. And I want you to choose a sentence frames. As I read, I imagine. Based on what I read, I picture. When the author says blank, I visualize. I see, hear, feel, smell, taste, what? You can choose one of those sentence frames or you can use one of your own making. So you may start writing now. Music or no music? What is happening? Sounds like we're at a church. Yeah. <laughs> Why is my device not hooked up? Let me check. 